What's up, and yes, sir, it's the Russian dude. Let's get straight to the point and talk about some ridiculous Russian propaganda. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, yeah. Okay, so yeah, today we have this uh, toy for Russian kids, which is basically, obviously, the Death Star from the Star Wars. But this has the official emblems of the Ministry of Defense of Russia, so it kind of implies that this is a part of the military arsenal of the Z army. I only wonder that there was some person who actually designed it. There was some person who actually revised the blueprints for this toy. There was a marketing department. And then there was eventually somebody who did approve it. Once again, putting the Ministry of Defense of Russia on the rim around this uh, Death Star. Saying that this is our response to NATO. <laughs> well, uh, if NATO actually attacks Putin's regime, I would say they would need more than this toy. Well, but what do I know, guys? Please let me know down below in the comments. But okay, as always, it is time to get... serious, exactly. <laughs> so let's talk about the window of opportunity for Putin. Now it's finally closed, because American weapons already started arriving to Ukraine. Then I'm gonna give you update from the east. Ukrainians did not wait long and started already using them. And then update from the south, where Russians decided to kinda already fall back to the entire Crimean Peninsula. I think they don't consider defending Kherson possible any longer. So let's see. And to begin with, according to the representatives of the White House, yes, indeed, Ukraine already started receiving the military support, weapons and equipment from America, which was approved for them in this most recent massive package. And then there are videos like this, for example, from Poland, where local people are recording videos of these actually military vehicles actually already being transported to Ukraine. If you remember, Biden did mention that as soon as this law passes, he will try to get this as soon as possible to Ukraine, because a lot of this equipment and military units are located in bordering countries, such as Poland. According to some Ukrainian military representatives, the window of opportunity for Putin is now officially closed. Russians did try to intensify the attacks against the civilian infrastructure, residential areas, and obviously along the front lines. They did have some minor success, but it was not even close to be enough to change the course of this so-called special military operation. So yes, now this opportunity for Putin probably is lost forever. And just like I mentioned a couple of minutes ago, Ukrainians did not want to wait until all the equipment arrives. They already started using it quite effectively. So let's talk about this right now. Attacks against the territory of Russia, the situation in the east and in the south. But first of all, guys, thank you for not subscribing for my previous video, because, yeah, uh, if we reach 245,000, I'm shaving my beard and leaving just the mustache. But if you are curious, let's see if there are more people like this. If you are curious to see me with the mustache only, subscribe to my channel and like this video. This will help a little bit with the algorithm. Don't forget about my second channel, The Russian Dude Investing. I forgot to mention it yesterday. I did release a very interesting video with most unusual investment opportunity for 2024. And my next video, I will be talking about the most profitable crypto investments of this week. So guys, if you are interested, the link to my second channel is down below. Thank you so much. You can also follow me on Instagram. The link is down below. And so yes, so now let's switch our attention to the east and to the territory of Russia. First of all, as you can see in Krasnodar Krai, for example, Russians started to install these barbecue grills literally over their oil refineries, trying to protect them from drones. Well, apparently it did not help, because right here is the satellite image, which is coming to us from Razdorova Smolensk region, and as you can see, some oil storages were able to be destroyed by Ukrainians. And then another satellite image from Yartseva, also Smolensk region where even more storages have been um, ceased to exist. Besides this, right here is another satellite image comparison from Kuchevska airfield, which also, as you can see, has been successfully targeted by Ukrainians, and reportedly some military fighter jets of Russians were decommissioned probably forever. And even one of the most recent reports by the British intelligence claims that they are referring to the Ministry of Defense of Russia, which basically says that during these attacks, Russians were able to intercept at least 66 Ukrainian drones. I mean, guys, 
guys, just imagine this. 66, and these are only the ones which were intercepted, because there were some which did reach their final destinations. Most likely there were more than 70, maybe close to 100 of them. Just think about it. Almost 100 Ukrainian drones were able to uninterruptedly cross Russian Ukrainian border, fly to these military related objects, and eventually even strike the targets. So, this is a major failure of the Russian air defense systems, to say the least. And well, what do we guess is the response by Russians? As always, unfortunately, this is the only thing which they can do quite successfully, which is attacking the residential neighborhoods in Ukraine, such as, for example, right here, is the video with the consequences from Kharkov. But Ukrainians do not lose the sight of their main objective, which is to win the war and not to scare the civilian population of Russia. That is why they continue to destroy the military objects of Russians. For example, right here is the video of two Russian books being um, uh, unexisted <laughs> in the Sumer region. And then right here is the video from Chasov Yar, one of the most intense zones in the entire east of Ukraine, where Russian armored personnel carrier BTR-82A was uh, stopped by something which was hiding under the Ukrainian soil. But honestly, the situation is much worse for Russians in the south, because it looks like that they started to give up, at least subconsciously, on some territories, and they literally started to try and defend Crimea, even though there is no direct threat by Ukrainians right now. There is no Ukrainian troops next to Crimea, but they already started erasing fortifications. So let's talk about this right now, and then I'm gonna give you a bonus chapter about Putin's number one traitor being eliminated. And first of all, unfortunately, is yet another video from the previous attacks against Odessa, which shows and confirms that Russians indeed use the cluster munition against literally civilian area. In Robotine, Ukrainians were able to repel two attempts by Russians, and then something similar also happened in Krynki, where Russians tried to push Ukrainians out of this settlement two times. Ukrainians were able to withstand these Russian attacks as well. But the most extraordinary news of the last 24 hours is that at least three different military objects across Crimean Peninsula were attacked by Ukrainians, and specifically they were located in Jankoy, Simferopol, and Gvardeyska, which is extraordinary. Once again, Ukrainians did not wait until every single piece of equipment arrives. They started using them right away, and reportedly three entire military units of Russians have been potentially fully destroyed as a result of these attacks. This is extraordinary achievement with just as little support as possible, which only once again started arriving into Ukraine. And so, as a result of all this, we have even more satellite images, which show that Russians started to seriously take this potential threat by Ukrainians against the peninsula, and they started building, or I would say they accelerating, accelerated the erecting of <laughs> fortifications along Crimean Peninsula, specifically at least 100 kilometers more were created war duck trenches and other fortifications, because previous one uh, in 2023, it was destroyed literally by nature. There was a storm in Crimea, if you remember, last year, and it was able to destroy Russian trenches, like, as simple as that. So Russians started building them once again, and they accelerated recently. Because, let's be honest, the Z army only has that much more resources left, they can only do one more offensive in only one more place. Which most likely is going to be the east, one of the potential places again is against Chasif Yar. At this point, Russians attacking the south is out of the question, they do not have resources to split them that far apart. For these reasons, Ukrainians most likely will take this as an opportunity, especially as even more Western support starts to arrive into the country. And Russians, once again, subconsciously, they do understand it as well. Most likely, the reason why fortifications are appearing in Crimea and not in Kherson region, it is because Russians in some way or another they are ready to give up at least parts of Kherson region, because they do want to focus their attention primarily on Crimea. Because if they do try and defend Kherson and Ukrainians will push through these defenses, most likely then they will have some kind of a victory rush, they will be extra motivated, and they might continue this uh, crusade all the way to Crimean Peninsula, and this one will be already extremely big hit against the regime of Putin, to say the least. And now guys, let's quickly talk about 
about Putin literally number one traitor being eliminated, but this chapter I decided to give us a thank you to my current Patreon members for supporting my work. This is now the main source of income for the Russian dude. So guys, if you do want to see this chapter along with all the other uncensored footage, early access and many other benefits, please consider checking my Patreon. There is one week of free access. The link is going to be down below and thank you so much. And there you have it guys. As always, thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe so I shave my beard. If we reach 245,000 before the end of this week, don't forget about my second channel, The Russian Dude Investing. Check other useful links down below, such as, for example, official The Russian Dude merch, cases, hoodies, all this kind of stuff. All these links are down below. Thanks so much for watching and see you tomorrow.